What's the difference between the FIA and FOM? Do you know who makes the rules in F1 or who decides where the races are held? Here's your insider's guide to the people that run F1. F1 is a complex sport with many key players. To begin with, we have the FIA, the governing body that makes all the rules. Then we have FOM, or the Formula One Group, the promoter for the series who drives the commercial success. And then there's the teams themselves, each of which has its own agenda. Paddock politics can sometimes be just as interesting as the on-track action, and this is how all the pieces of the jigsaw fit together. What does the FIA stand for and what does it do? The FIA stands for the Fédération Internationale de l'Automobile. That's French for Automobile Federation. It was established in June 1904, and it not only governs many different types of motorsport, it also covers global road safety. As F1's sanctioning body, it defines and governs the sport's regulations, with a heavy focus placed on safety. Its roles include many, many things, including writing the rulebook, carrying out crash testing, scrutineering at race meetings, marshalling, running the safety and medical operations, and last but not least, regulating races, stewarding, and assigning penalties. But who runs the FIA? The president of the FIA is an elected role, with voting held every four years. Jean Todd, who was the Ferrari team principal during the Michael Schumacher era, has been in charge for the last three terms. He was elected president in 2009, replacing Max Mosley. In December 2021, he will relinquish control having reached the maximum electable age of 75 and also hit the three-term limit. After him, there are currently two candidates to replace him. They are former Middle East rally champion Mohammed bin Salayam and the FIA's deputy president for sport, Graham Stoker. It's not a one-man band, though. The General Assembly is the supreme governing body, with representatives from all FIA member associations. Then there is the World Motorsport Council, the WMSC, which governs all FIA motorsports, including F1. It's the WMSC that defines the regulations and ratifies any rule changes. That includes agreeing the proposed calendar each year. It also runs the International Court of Appeal, which rules on any issues that escalate beyond a specific race event. So what about FOM? What does it stand for and what does it do? Well, FOM stands for Formula One Management. It is the main operating company of the Formula One Group, which owns the sport's commercial rights, brands and logos. FOM is responsible for doing deals with race promoters, brokering rights for TV coverage and arranging licensing agreements for the use of the F1 brand. It also defines the race calendar itself with the FIA's seal of approval. It also creates the global television feed and manages the logistics of moving teams and equipment from race to race. Its origins date back to 1974, when the Formula One Constructors Association, FOCA, was founded to manage the sport's commercial deals. It was led for more than 40 years by former F1 team owner Bernie Eccleston, but his reign ended when the group was bought by Liberty Media in 2017 and Chase Carey took to the helm. So, who runs FOM? Since the start of 2021, ex-Ferrari boss Stefano Domenicali has been president and CEO of Formula One. Funnily enough, he became Ferrari's team principal in 2008 after Jean Todd. Ross Braun, another ex-Ferrari man under Todd's reign, later team principal of Honda and Braun GP, is the managing director of motorsports. And last but not least, Chase Carey is now non-executive chairman. Before we discuss who makes the money and who has a say in the rules, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this series, Party Poker, who currently have a special sign-up offer. If you head over to the link in the description, open a new account and deposit £10 or more today, Party Poker will match it on deposits up to £400 and give you £40 worth of free play too. Only available if you are 18 or over, T's and C's apply and please be gamble aware and play responsibly. Who makes the money in F1? FOM brings in the big bucks, with race fees, TV income, partnerships and hospitality generating billions of dollars. Race fees are hush-hush, but are typically on 10-year scaling contracts from $30 million to $50 million per race. With 23 races on the 2022 calendar, that's close to $1 billion a year. Alongside that, TV rights earnings are estimated at around $600 million per year. Then there's official partnerships, of which there are 15, and smaller scale sponsorships also bring in significant revenue. 
And finally, Paddock Club Hospitality brings in another haul, with fine dining and exclusive access passes selling for thousands of dollars per person. What do F1 teams get paid by FOM? Well, it depends. The F1 teams get a chunk of that FOM revenue, and their share depends on a number of different elements. According to information revealed when the budget cap was introduced in 2021, all teams equally share 50% of a main prize pot. They then receive another payment based on their position in the Constructors' Championship, with 18% for the winner, down to 2% for last place. Added to that, the leading teams get a bonus based on their appearances in the top three of the championship over a rolling 10-year period. And on top of all of that, multiple teams get bonuses for various reasons. For instance, Ferrari get a humongous, long-standing team bonus payment for having raced in F1 every year since its inception in 1950. Do F1 teams get a say in how FOM runs F1? Yes, sort of. They are part of a 30-member voting group run alongside FOM and the FIA. They discuss a wide range of topics, including the calendar, proposed regulation changes, plans for the next-gen car, environmental aspects, and cost controls. Each team has one member in the group, meaning one vote per team, but the FIA and FOM have 10 members each in the group. Obviously, that means 10 votes each, a much bigger sway than the individual teams get. Short-term changes need a large majority of 28 votes to get through, while longer-term decisions only need 25. But at the end of the day, the FIA's World Motorsport Council has the final say. We must honorably adhere to the rules that we are making up on the spot.